As I'm preparing to record this episode a couple of weeks before it's actually going to air, I'm receiving all the texts in our neighborhood mom group me chain. Everyone is anxiously awaiting to hear teacher assignments and discussing bus stop locations and times of pickup and drop off. Several of my younger mom friends have kiddos going into kindergarten, and it made me want to revisit a topic that I blogged about years ago when my daughter was starting kindergarten. The topic of how much sleep is ideal for a kindergartner. More specifically, what are the signs that your kindergartner may benefit from more sleep? Hi, I'm Allison Edgity, a pediatric sleep and wellness coach and a mom of two. I love to help parents find solutions. This is How Long Till Bedtime. Both of my girls started daycare at 12 weeks old and attended an all-day preschool slash daycare. As I prepared to send my oldest to kindergarten, I remember thinking that it wasn't going to be that big of an adjustment for her. I had even adjusted my work schedule so that she wouldn't need to attend aftercare. So technically, in my eyes, her days were going to be shorter than they had been previously once she started kindergarten. And while I know she fared better than a lot of kids I know because she was used to a full day out of the home and I already was putting her down at 7 p.m., even she, well-rested at the age of five and a half years old, often needed a 6.30 bedtime during that kindergarten year. Every fall, I hear from parents who say their child is having a hard time transitioning into kindergarten. I hear about behavior struggles. I hear about resistance going to school. I hear about anxiety. I hear about kids who are super irritable when they get home. And of course, I hear about children who, despite being tired, are suddenly struggling with a major sleep regression. I acknowledge that there are many reasons a child may struggle adjusting to kindergarten. Even children who are used to going to daycare or school all day. Elementary school is very different than the typical daycare or even the typical preschool. In most cases, there is no rest or nap time. Typically, there is less outdoor time and less free play time. There is more focused learning and the expectation of the children to actually retain what they're being taught is noticeably higher. And then on top of that, many kids are attending after school programs that further wipe them out. Starting kindergarten is kind of like starting a new job in a new industry. It's a big adjustment. What I want to help kindergarten parents do is figure out how much sleep their child could benefit from in order to make this big year easier. Let's start with how much sleep is generally ideal for five to six-year-olds. This age group is typically going to thrive with 10 and a half to 12 hours of night sleep. That's actually a really big range. A child who is their best little self with 12 hours of night sleep is likely going to be a total hot mess with just 10 and a half or 11 hours of sleep. And a child who truly has lower sleep needs is going to be ready to conquer the world with just that 10 and a half hours of sleep. So how do you know how much your child could benefit from getting? To help you nail down how much sleep is actually ideal for your kindergartner in order to set them up to be their best little self this year, I actually want to share four signs that they aren't getting quite enough sleep. Number one, you need to wake your child up to go to school. I'm starting with this one because it's pretty critical. 
Many kids need to get up much earlier during the school year than they do during the summer. I have friends in my neighborhood whose kindergartners will need to be at the bus stop before 7 a.m. And I can absolutely assure you that if you're having to wake your kindergartner up to get them ready for school, they could benefit from more sleep. And that means they need to go to bed earlier. So this one is pretty black and white for me. If you're waking your child up on a regular basis to go to school, they could benefit from more sleep. Number two, your child is having a very hard time falling asleep at night. Now, while the first one I mentioned may have felt like an easy, "Uh uh-huh, yeah, that makes sense. This one is a little bit more confusing. If your child is taking a long time to fall asleep at bedtime, you may think that that's a sign that they're actually ready for a later bedtime. But there's really a good chance that they missed their strong, natural sleep wave and they're having a hard time because they caught a second wind. This can lead to more bedtime resistance and it can truly make it harder for kids to fall asleep even if they're not resisting going to bed. A lot of times this age group actually catches that second wind by 7.30 p.m. So if you're thinking your kiddo may fall into this group, it's taking them a long time to fall asleep, but they do seem like they may need some more sleep, try having lights out by 7 p.m. Okay, on to number three. Your child seems more anxious than usual. Just like adults, some kids are definitely more prone to anxiety. If you, like me, deal with anxiety, you likely know that being overtired fuels anxiety like nobody's business. I also have a child who struggles with anxiety, and I talk very openly about how being tired makes everything feel more overwhelming and harder. I talk openly about my anxiety when it flares up, and on those days, I always share that I need to go to bed earlier to help myself feel better. If your child is more anxious than usual, focus on getting them more sleep and see if that is a good starting point to help them feel better. Number four, last but not least, If your child seems really wired in the evenings, it might actually be a sign that they could benefit from more sleep. Sometimes this presents as a child being grumpy or tired after school or maybe during dinner, but then suddenly they are full of energy. For some kids, being overtired is going to consistently present as grumpiness And that's actually easier to spot the overtiredness. If they're clearly grumpy, you can think, okay, great, they're grumpy, they're overtired. But for other kids, it can present as being very wired or full of energy. That is a little bit more confusing because they don't seem tired. The best way to avoid that wired stage is to think about setting your child up for low key activities after dinner. And let me take that a step further, not just setting them up, but insisting on it. So no running around, jumping around, tickling. None of those things you think you're using to burn off steam are going to set them up for better bedtime. So think about low key activities, puzzles, games, uno, something where you're low key after dinner, helping them prepare to wind down rather than helping them get more and more energized or wired. I want to acknowledge that shifting to earlier bedtimes can feel really counterintuitive and frankly daunting, but getting enough sleep allows children to have better emotional regulation. It allows them to have improved impulse control, and it allows them to have higher levels of learning retention without having to work as hard to remember what they're being taught. 
I think those are all things we want for our children. Who doesn't want to have emotional regulation? Who doesn't want to have improved impulse control? And who doesn't want to have higher levels of learning retention? These are really no-brainers, and I really believe that getting the right amount of sleep can actually make a big difference when it comes to a child having a great kindergarten year versus possibly a stressful kindergarten year. I hope this episode is helpful as you start to navigate figuring out how much sleep will set your kindergartner up for a really great kindergarten year. And before I wrap up today, I want to let parents who have a strong-willed two-and-a-half to six-year-old who is struggling with their bedtime routine, or is struggling falling asleep on their own, or is struggling with middle-of-the-night wakings, I want to let those parents know that I have a special September sleep session that is currently open for enrollment. Your Preschool Sleep Champion is a lifeline for exhausted parents and restless little ones. You can say goodbye to bedtime battles and say hello to restful nights filled with sweet dreams. Imagine evenings where your child peacefully drifts off to sleep on their own without needing you in the room or waking up multiple times during the night. You'll be able to choose between four unique approaches that can bring peaceful evenings back to your family. And in this special September session, it's going to come with personalized Zoom support sessions with me. So picture this, the opportunity to join seven interactive Zoom sessions where you get direct access to me, your sleep ally. You'll be able to ask me your burning questions, share your concerns, and together we'll tackle those sleep-related sticking points that have been robbing you of your evenings and keeping your family up at night. Now, I know fall is a busy time, and you might be thinking, should I wait to do this? Well, here's the thing. I open the doors to these special Zoom sessions only three times a year, in September, January, and May. And let's face it, there is never a perfect time. And while you can always purchase this program, having me as an accountability partner during this September session may be what finally makes the changes stick. So if you've ever considered giving your preschool sleep champion a shot, but you've also wanted personalized guidance to help you navigate this sleep transformation successfully, this is your moment. Head over to www.allisonedgedy.com forward slash YPSC to learn more about how you can change your family's nights for the better. Don't forget that you can also find the link, just like all the links I mentioned in the show notes, or you can simply shoot me a DM on Instagram and we'll get you the link. Let's work together to make bedtime battles a thing of the past and embrace the serenity of peaceful evenings and sleep-filled nights. I hope to see you on those Zoom sessions very soon. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to How Long Till Bedtime. To learn how we can work together to improve your child's sleep, please visit sleepandwellnesscoach.com. 